I G N P L A N Design Plan. And for those that are here for for, for the first time, we're continuing a sermon series we've been in entitled Model Home. So let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, and verse 3. Amen. Proverbs 24, verses 3 through 6, and it reads as this. Through wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it's established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong. Yes, a man's knowledge increases strength. For by wise counsel, you will wage your own war, and in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for opening us up right now. Yes, God. Lord God, we're nothing more than a clean sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. And Father God, as we share your word, I pray, Lord, that your word will begin to write itself on the tablets of our heart. Father God, we pray that your word allows wisdom, knowledge, understanding to come forth and give us what we need to live the abundant life yes. that you've said that we can have in you. Father God, we as pastors, we step aside that you may step forward and get the glory in all that we say and do. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Proverbs 24 and 3, it says, through wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding, it is established. I believe here in the book of Proverbs, because it is the book of wisdom, anytime we're navigating through life or find ourselves in places and positions where we may need some sense of direction, we can always go to the book of wisdom to get it. Yes. And here in the book of Proverbs, it list some things, some ingredients that we need to have in place to have the model home that many of us, we so long to desire. Mm -hmm. It says we should have wisdom, understanding, knowledge, uh, wise counsel. This is no, nothing more than the bedrock or the foundation for us to have the relationship and the family that God so richly desires for us to have. Yeah. So I just want to begin to paint the picture that if you want to have a model home. And many of you all, you've seen what model homes are. Mm -hmm. They're the homes that people put up uh, at the start of the community. Mm -hmm. So you can get a glimpse of what the future homes can become. Yes. And we want to begin to paint the picture that God is today giving us a glimpse of the families yes. and the lifestyles and the legacies that we can have by giving us a glimpse based on his word. Yes. And I believe that if we receive his word mm -hmm. and we allow the word to work in our lives, we can then have the model home or the design that he real originally intended for the family to have. Amen. Uh, this particular series was spawned off of us in a season where we've been visiting uh, different model homes. And of course, we always get inspira inspiration by the things that are going on in our daily life. And as we begin to think about how our mo home should be modeled, we begin to think about how those models look. They're designed just right. They have everything in place. The wall colors are everything that you have in, in the room that's matching. And everything just looks and flows just right. And that's what God wants from our families. He wants our structure to be just right. He wants the hearts of our families to flow and everything to be in harmony. So we've been talking about model home and we begin in part one, uh, which we're going to go over. It was called the foundation. Uh, part one, we talked about working on learning and understanding mm -hmm. your family. You can never know everything there is to know. We begin to share that because uh, as a family, you have to continue to learn and grow one another. You can't just pause back when you met back in 1987, but you have to now come up to 2020 and continue to learn and grow and know one another. Likewise with our children, we can't just pause and think that we know everything there is to know about them. When they get into those preteen years, their minds are changing. 
changing. Their mm -hmm. lives are changing. We have to make sure that we're learning them, growing every step along the way and not be living in a home with simply just strangers. Number two, we talked about connecting with others who model Christ's love in living form. Those were the foundational things. Wisdom, you have to have wisdom. And then we talked about having those multitude of counselors, making sure that the people that are in your life, you can model your life after. Making sure that your friends, your family, those that you closely associate with are people that you can actually say that I can model my family after them because I see the goodness of God. There's something about the love of God on the life of a family that is very attractive. The world sees it. They want it. And that's what God wants us to be, a family of love, and make sure that we're exemplifying that and hanging around the same type of people. Amen. So we're going to begin to unveil this whole design plan. But I want to pause again for Proverbs 24 and 3, and I'll read it in the ERV. Good homes are built on wisdom and understanding. Yes. Knowledge fills the room with rare and beautiful treasures. Wisdom makes a man more powerful. Knowledge gives a man strength. Get good advice before you start a war. To win, you must have good advisors. Here, I believe this is a, a template for us to have a model home. Last week, we talked about the foundation of the model home is the, is the foundation. Uh, in order to have the foundation right, you have to have uh, wisdom, understanding, uh, good counsel, and knowledge. Mm -hmm. That pretty much lays the foundation. And many of y'all uh, understand that in order to build a house, you have to have it built on a good foundation yeah. because it doesn't make sense to build on a broken foundation, a shaky foundation, because no matter what you build is going to fall back down. Yeah. But also in the book of Proverbs, it gives us God's original plan for his families as it relates to oneness. Mm -hmm. I'll call it a design plan, a design plan. What is the design plan where God lays out the plan for the family? Mm -hmm. Uh, you may say, well, Pastor Charles, uh, what's so good about the design plan? Really, it is what people get up for. Yeah. They get excited about being able to design their own home. Yeah. They get excited about being able to uh, craft their own colors throughout the model home. Yeah. They, they get excited about um, allowing putting certain bells and whistles, the appliances, and all these design features in a particular place. Mm -hmm. But we just want to begin to paint the picture that uh, in order for your design plan to be what it needs to be, you must make sure that you follow the manuscript yes. that God has already written concerning family. Yes. Um, just to pause, in other words, I want to say that Although man may have his plans for mm -hmm. what a family should be, we must make sure that we always fall back on what God's original intent for the family is. Yeah. How did he design man? How did he design woman? How did he design the children? Notice I said man, woman, children. I did not say girly men or manly girls. I said Man, woman, children. Mm -hmm. Let me break it down. Male, female, yes. children. The design is God's plan. Yes. In other words, although this society may say being uh, homosexual is good, mm -hmm. God says, no, 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 I don't care what you might call it or label it. Yeah. I see male, female, children. God's <laughs> original plan. Yes. But so often what we try to do is redesign God's plan for our lives. Mm. But God is saying you can't redesign what I've already designed. Yes. And no law, no subpoena, no court order, yes. no nip, no tuck from the doctor yes. is yes. going to change what I have called you. Yes. I have a plan. I have a purpose for mankind and it is good yes. in my eyesight. Yes. Yes, yes. And I started thinking about as you started saying that you can't change the plan. One of the things that I know when you're purchasing, a lot of people may be doing maybe homes and they desire to have a new home. But there's such thing called a spec home. And with the spec home, you can't make any changes. It's as the builder designed it. Whatever's in that house 
is in that house and you can't make any adjustments until you purchase and buy it or you do your own thing. Likewise, God has already set the pattern. He's already set the design. We can't tell the manufacturer what to do with our bodies or what to do with our families. He has already set the original plan for the family. The original plan for the family is to have that oneness, have that unity, everybody walking in harmony. It's difficult sometimes. Trust me, I know. We have hiccups. We have ups. We have downs. Mm -hmm. But oneness is not impossible. You can have oneness in your family. You can have oneness with your children. You can have harmony as a whole unit for your household. It's not obtain uh, unobtainable. You can do it. There are some things that you just have to put in place. There are some things that you're going to have to lay down and put to the side. And there, we'll talk about two of those things that have to be laid to the side in order to keep the oneness in your household. Amen. So the original plan for all families is oneness. It's oneness. It's oneness with God and it's oneness with his word and yes. plan for our yes. lives. Genesis 2 and 21 says this. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought unto her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woe man because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father mm -hmm. and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Mm -hmm. And they were both naked and the man and his wife were not ashamed. Mm -hmm. Here in the book of Genesis, we can see where God uh, allowed oneness to take place yes. in the garden. Yes. Oneness between male and female, mm -hmm. man and woman. He began to call the woman out of man's flesh or out of Adam. And I love this particular scripture because it lets us know that uh, God intended for oneness to be part of every family dynamic. And the only way oneness can be a part of the family dynamic is to make sure you're part of God's original design plan. Yes. Male, female, yes. children. It's all going back to oneness. And it's hard for the family dynamic to be truly one if any one of these aspects are out of order. Yes. You can't have true harmony if you're playing a different note or a different key mm. from the original or the original design. Yes. What is the original design? Man, female, children. Uh, it's a chord. Scripture even tells us a threefold chord no. is not easily broken. But what society tries to do is tries to tell us it's okay to be a female and it's okay to have another female relationship. What is that? A different key. Mm -hmm. It's something that's outside of the core. It's not in harmony with God's original design. Yes. There's hard, it's hard. There will never be no true oneness because it's outside of God's original intent. Yes. So we just got to begin to understand that God has already laid out a certain design. Yes, he he has also laid out a certain design to say that um, no matter how you how much you cohabitate, if you fail to come together in true yes. committal, yes. there will never be no marriage. Yes. All these things are important and necessary that we have to understand mm -hmm. that in order for us to have God's true design plan yeah. of true oneness, we got to be one with each other yes. based on his concept, yes. and we got to be one with the Lord as yes. well. Yes, yes, yes. Give God some praise. Everybody ain't going to clap about this message. It's tight, but it's right. Yeah, you can't redefine what God has already designed. You can't redefine it, and you can't add to what God has designed. Uh, there are some people who want to add to the design by saying, well, marriage is old-fashioned. You know, we don't want to be in a committed relationship. We commit it to each other, and that's all. But that's not the original intent or plan for God. He doesn't want us just to be cohabitating and living with one another, but not making that final step of commitment. A lot of times, you're doing everything married people doing anyway. Mm -hmm. Why not make that step? Go ahead ahead and do what the Lord says to do. Uh, I always tell people it don't take that long to know if somebody for you and if they ain't. <laughs> Say that one more it, time. it don't take that long. 
either you they for you or they're not. And if they're not for you, why are you still holding on to them? Just let them go if they're not for you. If you're not willing enough to make the commitment before God, because it has nothing to do with people. It has everything to do with God, having a right relationship with God. If you want to have that right relationship with God, then you'll go ahead and do what's necessary to be right in the eyes of God. It has nothing to do with satisfying what the pastor says or what people say. It's about you having that right oneness with God. So you can have a continual flow of harmony. A lot of times people want to know why their life is so hard. Well, the scripture says that the way of a transgressor is hard. hard. You're going to have hard times. You're going to have things where you feel like you're going and everything's getting good. And then, boom, you off of the path because the life of a transgressor or the way of the transgressor is hard. What is a transgressor? It's somebody who is against what God has designed or planned for his word. We have to be truth with the true with ourselves and say God I ain't living right I can't expect for you to continue to overflow in my life he says the blessings of God are unto repentance he wants you to repent when he blesses you and if you don't repent then now you got consequences to go along with it and we try to figure out what's happening in my life it's the transgressions that are going on in your life so if you want oneness if you want harmony if you want unity in your family unit then just make things right, plain and simple. It doesn't have to be anything um, big and elaborate. It could be something simple as you going to get your stuff to get your paperwork settled so that you can say, I do, plain and simple. Amen, amen. And I just want to begin to pause on verse 24 again because it says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother mm -hmm. and shall cleave to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Yeah one flesh they shall be one flesh and that is God's ideal marriage God's ideal family where two are coming together to become one yeah. one what is that husband wife and God uh, that threefold core where everything is in total harmony with God yes. but here's what the enemy wants to do he wants to attack the family design through selfishness yes. and pride. Mm. Through selfishness and pride. In the garden, I want you to see this picture. When God created Adam, mm -hmm. there was total harmony, mm. total peace. Nothing missing, mm -hmm. nothing broken. Yeah. Adam woke up. And he didn't have to work. He was in God's presence. Mm -hmm. And in the presence of the Lord, there's Ooh, fullness joy. of joy. Yeah. Adam was a happy man. Yeah. Waking up every day, looking at God's creation. Mm -hmm. Looking at what God made. And one day, Adam woke up. Mm -hmm. And God looked at Adam and he said, it's not good for man to be alone. Let me make him a help meet. Somebody that's going to help him out. Yeah. Help him continue to be what I called him to be. Mm -hmm. Help him continue to fulfill the mission and the assignment that I have for him to do. Yeah. And everything was in harmony. Mm -hmm. But the enemy, knowing what God created mm -hmm. and knowing that he was opposed to God's harmony or God's design plan in the earth, he came in and he spoke to Eve. Mm -hmm. And when he spoke to Eve, he tried to convince her that where they were and what they had was not good enough. Yeah. I'll say that one more time. The devil came in and talked to Eve mm -hmm. and convinced her somehow, some way mm -hmm. that what she had and where they were and what they were doing yeah. was not good enough. Mm -hmm. What did Eve do? She ended up buying that lie. Mm -hmm. She ended up buying uh, the, the, that, that bogus bill of goods yeah. the enemy sold her. And she took it to the man Adam. Mm -hmm. And Adam, like a fool. 
He ate it up. Hook, line, and sinker. And sinker. That Negro <laughs> fell for the trick. Mm. It's the power of the booty. It's the power of the booty, y'all. He fell for it. And, 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 my, and my thought is, if you're in a perfect situation, uh-huh. how would you let somebody mess up your utopia? Why would you let somebody try to, get this, redesign mm. what God has already designed? And when he ended up falling for the trick, mm. the tactic of the enemy, what happened? He fell because of selfishness mm. and pride. Mm. Ooh. That's what happened in the guard. Yeah. They fell because of selfishness yeah. and pride. They ended up trying to be like God. Mm. They wanted the wisdom and the knowledge of God. Yeah. Not knowing God had already given them everything that they needed. Yeah. And so often God has already given us everything we needed based on his word. Yeah. But what we try to do is redefine what God has already de defined. But God is saying, no, 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 no. Don't fall for the tactics. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's nothing more than selfishness and pride. Yes, yes, yes. That's why they have gay pride week. I guess I shouldn't have said that. Because they're trying to redefine mm -hmm. what God has already defined. Yeah. That's why people can live together, cohabitate mm. year in, year after year after year. They can drink the milk, but never buy the cow. Mm. Why? Because of selfishness and pride. Yeah. It will cause you to forfeit God's original plan. Yeah. But what God is saying, come back to the oneness. Yeah. Why? Because a threefold cord is not easily oh, broken. What is that? Oh, that's is. husband, that's wife, and that's God in the middle. Yeah. That's that C, G, and E. And when you play it together, it sounds perfect because yeah. it is perfect. Yeah. And that's God's original yeah. design for our lives. Yes, 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 yes. And we're talking about the attackers, which are selfishness and pride. Uh, a lot of times we don't realize how selfish we can be. Really, uh, a person who is selfish can't really work in a relationship. Selfish people have a hard time being in any relationships, family, work, uh, friendships, uh, with anybody because they're selfish. They want everything how they want it, when they want it, the way they want it. And a selfish person never realizes that what everybody can do together will bring a better harmony. Mm. There is a, a sound that comes with selfishness. It sticks out. It stands out. Uh, it's like a, a, an annoying voice. When you hear selfishness or see selfishness, it stands out. You'll know selfishness. It, it kind of, it, it's, it's like, a, a, like a praise team and someone sings a wrong note. That's that selfish sound. That's what selfishness sounds like in a household. When people are wanting to do what they want to do. I'm not doing what you say because I want to do what I want to do. And that is now how God designed the family. A mature person says, it's not about me, but it's about the us. Yeah. We can work this thing together. I'm not going to give up uh, just because I'm doing it. You know, just to have, I'm just, I'm, I'm the strong one. I'm the one giving up. No, then that's pride. But selflessness says, because I want the betterment of my family, I'm going to submit my will. We're going to submit one to one another. another. Yes. And we're going to work this thing through. Selfishness cannot call, you cannot work in a good marriage or a family or raise children and be selfish. A selfish person says, I want my children to do what I want them to do, period. No explanation. Never giving the children an opportunity to share their heart, to share how they feel, to talk about their day. No, I don't want to talk about your day. I want to talk about my day. Mm -hmm. And the children have feelings as well. A selfish person looks past everybody else in the house and they put everything towards them. Every argument, it turns back to them. Every situation that goes wrong, it's because everything goes back to them. That's selfishness. And if we want our families to have the design that God has designed for it, 
We got to not be selfish people. You can't be selfish and mature at the same time. I've never seen a matured, selfish person. It just won't be. If you want to walk in true maturity, you got to lay down selfishness. Amen, amen. To have a plan of one that selfishness has to be brought down. Yep. It has to be brought down. Bring it down. Uh, you have to bring it down and actually get it out, out. of your life. Yes. Uh, selfishness, you see what happened. Um, Adam and Eve, they end up being kicked out of the garden because mm -hmm. of selfishness. They desired to have more than what God was trying to give them. Yes. And anytime we as families and society, we try to uh, get more than what God has originally designed, mm -hmm. um, it is a sign that we are selfish mm -hmm. and we got to if, uh, let selfish go, selfishness go mm -hmm. uh, so that our families can be the best Ephesians yeah. 5 and 21 says submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God yes. um, I love this because we often talk about how we should submit one to another husband submitting under the wife wife submitting under the husband vice versa even mm -hmm. sometimes you have to submit under your children yeah. because God may give a word to your children yes. just for you yeah but you got to be willing to submit one to another. Mm -hmm. But I love this scripture because it says the reason why we submit one to another is because we're doing it in the fear of God. Yes. In the fear of God. If you don't have fear of God, you will never submit one to another. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the fear of God, you will never submit to God's original design and yeah. intent yeah. for the marriage and relationships. Um, so, so in order for this whole thing to work, you got to fear God. Yeah. But we're living in a day and time where uh, many don't fear God anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They don't reverence who God, in, mm -hmm. who God is anymore. They don't even believe in a heaven or hell. Yeah. They don't believe that Jesus is the son of God. Mm -hmm. They don't believe that there's power in the name of Jesus. They yeah. don't believe these things. And if you don't believe in the fear of the Lord, you will never submit one to another. Yeah. And you will never have the design that God originally intended. Mm -hmm. So we just want you to understand that all these things work together if you want to have the family that you're looking for. Yeah. And um, to have that selflessness, you got to be submissive. Um, I think a lot of people don't like the word submit because it means that you got to give up something. But submission is not a bad word because what submission will do, it will bring harmony. When we're both in agreement, it feels better. It does. It feels better in the house. You know, everybody is moving and we're all in one unit. When there is like discord or there is uh, like a not really a good feeling, it can be, it's tangible. People know when you come in the church and you not in oneness, we can feel it. When we're talking to you or we're in a meeting and there's no oneness, it sticks out. Trust me, people will know. And one of the things that we have to do to get selfishness out of our life is to say, it's not my will, God, but your will to be done. But people don't want to say, let your will be done, God, because they want their will to mm. be done. They don't want their uh, children to have their way. They want to have their own way. They don't want their spouse to get the thing that they, they want because I want what I want, so I'm losing. No, you're not losing. You're winning. When the family wins, we, we all, all win. win. Yeah. We're on the same team, so there's no loss. When I submit to what my spouse wants, I'm not losing anything. What I'm doing is I'm gaining victory against the enemy by allowing unity and harmony to flow yes. in my house. But if I don't or I combat that thing and I'm not... If I'm bumping up against him and he bumping up against me, it's going to bring disarray. People can't see Jesus through that. People can't see the love of God when we're at one another. When there is somebody who don't want to lay down what they want to lay down, then now there's disunity. Nobody sees the love of God. People see your life and they like, oh, that family, child. If that's all somebody can say when somebody mentions you, child. <laughs> something wrong with that yeah, got some work. when somebody says or says something about you or your family they should be like wow yeah that they they have the love of god that's a submitted people but if somebody say what you think about the married marriage child if they say child something wrong with that 
You want people to glorify yes, God. Yes. They want to be able to see your life and say, God is glorified through them. Those are two submitted people. Those people submit one to another. God is glorified in their life. When they come and when they, I see them on a day-to-day -day basis, they're changed. I see the change. It's not based on what they say, but it's based on what they do. Ooh, so submission good. Good. has to happen. We can't be selfish people. Amen. Yeah. Selfishness got to go. Amen. And I love how you talked about submission. And uh, when you start dumbing down what submission is, it's nothing more than um, both parties coming under what the mission is that God has for the family. Yeah. We know that God has some great things planned for our families. We know God uh, wants our family to prosper. He wants, he, we know God wants our family to be beacons of light in yes. this lost and dying generation. We know that uh, God wants our families to leave a legacy, and yes. he wants our children and our children's children to be saved mm. because of the life and the lifestyle that we live. Mm -hmm. What is that? That's nothing more than submission us coming under the mission that mm -hmm. God originally intended yes. and designed for the family. Amen. But in order for true submission to work, both parties got to be willing to submit to the mission, yes. submit to the plan. Do you know what God has planned and destined for your family? You got to know these things. Mm -hmm. And when you know these things, you got to submit and surrender to it. Mm -hmm. But what the enemy tries to do, he tries to let pride come in mm. to uh, one or both parts to yeah. say, you know, uh, we don't have to do things God's way. And when you don't do things God's way, you're not submitted to the vision, yeah. to the design that yeah. God yeah. intended. Yeah. So that leads us to this thought. If you let it, pride will destroy every plan of oneness mm. you try to establish. Mm -hmm. Man, this is good. Y'all ain't say nothing, but this is good. If you let it, mm. pride will try to destroy. In other words, pride will try to undo everything that God has built your family on. Yeah. Undo. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to put you in the sense of what undoing is. It's where God pushes you forward. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, something comes in. And allows you to have what, what the world calls a setback. Mm -hmm. The enemy is wanting to set your family back mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from the things of God, from the plan and purpose of God. Yeah. During this time right now, you can see it on Facebook Live. People having setbacks. Mm -hmm. You once loved the Lord. Your family once served the Lord. Yeah. But now y'all done had us a step back. A setback. Why? Because pride that came in. Yeah. You're trying to do something outside of God's original intent. Yeah. And before you know it, the enemy, he will unravel and undo every form of progress God has done in your life. Yes. And what we try to do is we try to say that, that the devil is busy. But the true reason that he is he's able to be employed <laughs> is because we allow pride yeah. to have its place in our life. Yes, yes. We know the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm -hmm. And he's wanting to undo the relationship in your family. Yeah. He's wanting to undo the legacy in your family. Yes. He know, he, you you got to see this. If God got great plans for you, the enemy's job is to unfold or undo everything that God has assigned for your life. Yes. And the way that he did it is through pride. Yes. In the garden. Mm. Eve. If you eat this fruit, you'll be just like God. Mm -hmm. And she took it and gave it to Adam. And that cow, mm -hmm. oh, oh, I didn't mean to say that. That oh, jellyback Negro, because that's what he was. That's why we working right now from the toils of the dirt. In the ground, working nine to five, all because of Adam. Mm. And y'all wonder why I thank God for Jesus. Because <laughs> he had to fix what Adam jacked up. Yes. So we're saying, don't be that Adam yes. that jacks up things. Yes. Undoing what God has already yes. done. Yes. 
God is saying, no, get back to the oneness, male, female, me, that threefold chord, that oneness, that harmony, that original design that I designed. And if you're trying to redesign things, things going to be hard. Yes. Where the transgress is hard. Yes, it is. The enemy, he going to undo everything that God done established. Mm -hmm. The enemy, he going to steal your praise. Yeah, you praised him hard for two years, but where you at now? You worship the Lord hard for three years, but where you at now? Yeah. You know the word. You done studied the word. You know to train up your family in the way that it should go. Yeah. And when they get old, they won't depart for, from it. But now you done let pride come in. Mm. Don't be that Adam. Yeah, don't be that guy. You need to be Jesus. Yes, yes. A reconciler. Yes. Able to fix things back yes, up. Yes, yes. Pull things back together yes. and be so one with God yes. that whatever the Father tells you to do, mm. you're going to do it. Yes. Come hell or high water, yes. come law or decree, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do things the way God designed it yes. because in him I live, move, and have my being. Amen. Give God some praise for that. That's good stuff. Good, 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 good. I want to also talk about what pride kind of looks like because I think people, when they hear pride, they think of something that's over the top. But pride is, it looks or appears in the way of not offering an apology. That's pride. Whenever something's going on in your household and instead of you saying, I'm sorry, pride will tell you don't say a word. Mm. Pride will say, I, I apologize in my head. That's all he needs. You want something to eat? That's not fixing the problem. And many people walk in pride and they think that that's going to solve the relationship. Y'all know how it works? Instead of saying, baby, I'm sorry. I said the wrong thing and I shouldn't have said that. So will you forgive me? But instead, you go on about your day. Later on that day, you want something to eat? Nope. I don't want no angry food. <laughs> I don't want no mad food. You might put some chemicals or something. In there. And that's how pride works. Instead of telling your children, I'm sorry. And we do have to apologize to our children sometimes. We do. We Instead do. of telling our children, son, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have uh, yelled at you. I should have taken a better approach and just kind of talked you through this thing. Instead, you just like, hey, come down and get something to eat. That's not apologizing. That's pride. Pride comes in when you know that you've done wrong, and yet instead of opening up your mouth and asking a person to forgive you, you go on like there's nothing wrong. We can't live like that as a people of God. People of God are submitted. People of God are repentive. We repent. Repent means we recognize what's wrong, and we don't do it again. And that's what God wants from our life. We can't be prideful people instead of saying what we want God or asking God for forgiveness. We try to brush it over. Oh, I'm going to take you out. Oh, I'm going to buy you some flowers. That's not resolving the issue. The pride is still there. Come on. That's you got real. to get the pride out. That's real. Pride says, ooh, I know I'm right. But for the betterment of this family, Come on. I'm going to submit myself and say, babe, I love you. We don't need to be arguing. You good. I love you. Let's move forward. I love you too. Pride will say, I ain't saying nothing to him. I know I'm right. He wrong. I ain't saying nothing. Be walking around silent, fixing food. Silent treatment for days at a time. You sleeping in one room, she sleeping over here. Oh, no. Pride. Uh-uh, we ain't doing that. We Pride to have you on the sofa. Bed. Mad or not. We sleeping Pride. in the same bed because I might change my mind. <laughs> Pride to have that big old space in between in the bed. Mm -hmm. They try to stick their foot over there, you put it way back. Not for long, though. No. They could drive a Mack truck through the middle of that bed. Because of pride. Somebody is not unprideful enough or submissive enough, I should say, 
to ask for forgiveness. Don't let pride ruin your family. Because some people can walk around for days at a time. I don't know how. You live in a house with somebody and you not speak? That gets under my skin so deep. I'll stop you in your tracks. Er, you ain't talking to me. You going to talk today. <laughs> <laughs> Pride can't yeah. hang around me because I'm not yeah. going to do it. Yeah. You have to make sure you get pride out. If there's something that needs to be discussed, let it out. If you need to talk through some things, talk it through. If you got to ask for forgiveness, do it. Ask your children to forgive you. You didn't raise them, right? Don't try to act like you had the handbook or the special Browns, what the man named that make the bottles, Browns special handbook on parenting. You didn't have a handbook. I know I did some things wrong. Guarantee. And if I got to say I'm sorry, I will say it. Because it's for the betterment of my family. I'm going to submit myself to the will of God. I won't let pride have its way in my life. Yes. Because pride will cause you to have dis-ease in your body. Come on. And you'll have all kinds of things going on. So learn how to ask God for forgiveness. And then turn around and ask those that you offended for forgiveness as well. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise there. We, we can't finish this message, so I'm going to just have to wrap things up right now. Proverbs 16 and 18, pride goes before destruction yes. and a haughty spirit before a fall. You have to get pride out of your life. You got to get pride out of your family, out of your relationship. Uh, you got to really submit yourselves. Uh, some of us, we just got to simply ask God for forgiveness. Yeah. It starts with him. We got to ask God and say, God, forgive me for being prideful. Forgive mm. me for being stiff-necked. Mm. I don't want to be a stiff-necked generation. Mm. Uh, we, we, and, and when we do that, then we can go to our spouse and we can ask our spouse for forgiveness. Yeah. Man, sometimes we've jacked some things up. When the atmosphere in our house is not right, if it's no harmony, if it's no one one accordness in our house if it's no togetherness in our house we have to really just kind of come to grips and say hold on hold on let us go back yes. until god's original design yes. because harmony get this it feels good yes it does a harmonious house it feels good a harmonious house it even sounds good it's a certain sound that comes when you're in a harmonious house. Because when you, gotta, when you start looking at it, it's nothing more than God's threefold chord. Aaron, you're playing a chord right now. Give me the C chord. Give me the C chord. That's the C chord? Yeah, the C chord. Give me C. Give me C. Give me E. Give me G. Yeah, play them together. It's harmony. C, E, G. Give me the husband. Play that C chord. Give me the wife. Play the, play, play E. Where I'm turning at. Give me the G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play them again together. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, throw me one of the more bad notes that's not in that chord. Throw it in there. Let me hear how the devil sound. Oh, that <laughs> Negro sound. He done, he done jacked it up. Y'all hear that? It sound bad. Come on. Play, play, play that. Let, let me hear the devil again. It's, it's just messed it up. And that's what pride does. Yeah. It takes away the harmony. Yeah. It takes away the oneness. It takes away the unity. You go, yeah, yeah. You gotta come back to the court. That other, that other thing just threw me off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something pleasant about a family that's under one mind, one accord. That says, I'm going to be totally sold out yes. for Jesus. I'm going to be totally sold out for the mission that God has for yes. my life. Yes, yes. 
when families submit one to another, mm. the C, the E, the G, it works all together. And what we're saying is, get back to that original design. Yes. Get pride out of your life. Yes. Get selfishness out of your life. Yes. It don't sound good. It don't feel good. And at the end of the day, it won't be good. God wants us to be one with him, yes. one with each other. And in order to do that, we have to get back to the design he intended. Amen? Yeah. Come on, let's give God some praise. That's all we yeah. have for you. Yeah. Yes. yes. I did want to include, uh, if there is any family members or if your household is in a point right now where there's selfishness and pride, I want you to take the time out today to try to reconcile some things. Call that loved one, husbands and wives, y'all sit down and y'all talk. Let's get this unity going back again. Let's get back to us. Let's get back to where God is at the center of everything that we say and do. If you're a parent and you're raising your children and your children are feeling some type of way, get with your children. Let's get the harmony flowing back in the household. Find out what's going on in their hearts. Find out if you did something that you need to ask them to forgive you for. Because as parents, we can offend our children as well. So if there's something that they have in their heart, show them how to work through pride. Show them how to get those things out of their life mm -hmm. so that they can be unified and walk in unity, submitting one to another in the household as well. So if you need to do that, do it. Make sure you take care of it before the sun goes down tonight. That is your assignment. Make unity the priority for your family. Amen? Amen, amen. amen. We're going to close in prayer. Go ahead and um, join hands with your family members. Go ahead and join hands with your spouse. Yeah, hook up with them. Yeah, physically and in the spirit. I give myself away. Yes. I give, I give myself away. So you. Can you, can you lose me? Give myself away. Father God, we let go pride. We let go selfishness. Yes. Anything outside of your original design, we let it go. And Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for being able to hear your word. I thank you, Lord God, for opening up the hearts and the minds of every family right now. Yes. I thank you, Lord God, for giving us a sure word, Lord God, that they can eat upon and they can implement in their life right now in the name of Jesus. We come against disharmony. We come against disunity, yes. Lord God. Yes. We rebuke the enemy in the name of Jesus. And he has to flee from our lives. Yes, God. Any form of pride, any form of bitterness, any form of unforgiveness right now. We let it go right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we look up to you first and we ask you to forgive us, Lord yes, God. God. Forgive us for being a haughty generation. Yes. Forgive us for being prideful. Forgive yes, us God. for being selfish, Lord God. Forgive us for putting us first, Lord God, when we should put you first, Lord God. Yes. So, Father God, we ask for forgiveness for you, from you, Lord God. Hallelujah. And, Father God, we ask for forgiveness from our spouse right now. I pray, Lord God, that you will allow the husband and the wife to bind together in unity. Yes, I pray, Lord yes. God, that even those that are in relationships to submit themselves and to humble themselves, Lord God, so that you may be glorified here in the earth right yes, now. God. Father God, I even pray, Lord God, that every family shall submit under the ultimate vision. And that is yes. the vision that you have for all mankind. That all shall come into the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, that we will all be a witness, Lord God. That we will all allow your light to shine yes. upon this earth, Lord God. Yes. We just say forgive us, Lord God, Amen. for all of our transgressions, yes, Lord God. God. Because you said in your word, the way of the transgression is hard. And if we experience hard places continually in our lives, it might be a sign we need to change a few things in our yes, lives. God. 
So, Father God, we just come before you, Lord, to say, have your way in our lives. We come here to surrender and submit to you, Lord God. Surrender and submit to your will and surrender and submit to your way, Lord God. We don't want to be like Adam, a person that was selfish and a person that was prideful. But we want to be like Jesus. Hallelujah. The son of God that was full of humility right now. Lord God, we humble ourselves right now up under your mighty hand. That you might be exalted, yes. hallelujah, in due time, in our family, yes, in our Lord. relationship, and even in our children. Yes. We fully surrender to you, that you may get the glory in all that we say and do. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. And the church said, come on, let's give God some praise.